Hey guys, thanks for joining us on this segment. We're gonna go over um, site uh, preparations before we fly the drone. So we are going to use our network rover here. We're going to set a point for our base station. That way our DRTK2 um, mobile station, the DJI base station is set up over a known point. Then we're gonna shoot some points for our um, GCPs or our ground control points. We wanna space those out so that we're getting a good representation of the site. Um, we want to make sure we don't put them any linear or just around the boundary of our site, kind of space them out uh, and make sure uh, we get a good representation um, around points of interest. The, the GPS and the drone stuff is separate in the field um, and the software is really where you bring them together. Um, so we don't need to do anything fancy about putting in coordinates or localizations into our drone. Um, that'll all be done kind of in the software, so it's kind of nice to keep those separate out here. point DJI base and then I'm going to measure it so you can see it's measuring um, this point um, the next point we'll do will be our GCPs um, you need a minimum of at least three um, and then kind of depends on your drone um, and the site on how many others we do um, in our trainings we'll kind of go over uh, best practices for for that okay so that point is done so now we're gonna put our GCP. GCP, oh no. All right, we're gonna shoot the center of it. This is gonna be one of our uh, ground control points that we'll use to tie down our photogrammetry flight with the P1. Also make for a good checkpoint with the L1. So we're gonna again space these out, make sure they're not linear. Measure. See up here the satellites it's communicating with. And then your horizontal and vertical accuracy. So what it's doing is as it's sitting here, it's getting an average where that point should be. That's it. So what I'm going to do now, go to my points. And you can see all my points are listed here. Um, my DJI base one, if I click on that and edit that, I'll get my lat and long. And I'll put the lat long and um, ellipsoidal height in the DJI base station to tell it where it is. Um, and then I can export and share this text file. Um, so it's going to save all the points. The format I wanted exported as. So we have our um, DJI base and our three points on here. We're gonna give it a name. Except export five points. And we want to send it by email. So this will just send me an email directly. So no having to fuss with a USB um, to pull it, the text file off. We are ready to fly. So we'll just take those points. We'll put it into the drone. Um, in the office here. It looks like it's going to be less than a minute. The upper corner here I have my health management status. Um, you can see everything's grayed out but we will get everything turned on so I'm going to turn the drone on now. So you can see I have the P1 payload connected. I'm going to enter my camera view here. This is just my pre-flight checklist. Just making sure we you know, um, all the sensors look all good um, and the um, arms are locked. So I'm going to go to my RCK tab here. I'm going to turn on RCK. I'm going to have it connected to the DRTK2 mobile station. I'm going to click adjust coordinates. Perfectly fine. 
time because we adjusted the coordinates. So I'm gonna exit out here. Um, I look at my health management status. You can see that my DRGK2 is red. So again, like I said, to get that clear, we're just gonna power cycle the drone. Cloud um, is PicSorty's cloud option to process the drone data. You can see my 2D view here of my ortho mosaic, and then these purple dots represent um, my 3D ground control point. You can see on the list here, I can pull up a report. So PicSorty Cloud does an auto GCP report. So this just shows you the GCPs and how they were tagged. The nice thing is we can also view our quality report to just see how well the GCPs were tied down. Um, so you can see right here, um, my GCPs, I had an RMS error of three hundredths. If I scroll down just a little bit more, PaySorty sort of will give me a more detailed report of the GCPs, um, each individual one, um, and then these statistics on this. So you can see this report here. Um, I can have the number of images it was tied down to, and then my Z error. So you can see everything was very, very low, um, and we are definitely survey grade accurate for this um, project. I'm just going to switch back to view the point cloud a little bit more. Um, I can toggle on my digital surface model. So here um, you can see it just shades it in different colors, um, and then I can that with the satellite map as well. If I toggle to 3D, um, we can see my point cloud. And then again, you can see the purple targets of where the GCPs were. Um, and you can see how um, that is tied down here. If I don't want to see them, I can just uncheck it here. Um, then I can do several other different features. Um, in the cloud version here. Um, <clears throat> first being line measurements. So I can, if I wanted to know this parking line, for example, I could just click and measure it here. Um, I can generate an elevation profile as well of where I draw lines. So this is really nice for ditches and um, basically pipes utilities, things in the ground where you want to get an elevation profile. Um, you can, we can also do a couple other different features. Uh, I can do area, radius, volume measurements. Um, I can also do point measurements. So if I wanted to know what this point is right here, I have my north and easting elevation for it. Uh, I could plug that into my data collector and go stake it back out if I wanted. And then lastly, um, we have this inspect tool. 
Um, this is for if we wanted to just see a visual of the images each of that point is in. Um, so you can see how it pulls up where I selected, which was the GCD. A couple other features we haven't gone over is if we had a PDF, we could um, insert a vector design there or a PDF plans and kind of overlay that with our drawing here. Um, and then lastly, um, we can share everything with a nice link and they can do the same measurements we used to, or we just did. Um, all they need is a um, internet browser. Um, same thing for you to process Pix4D Cloud. Um, you don't need a heavy duty computer, you just need um, to have access to the internet just like any other cloud-based software. And then you can see up at the top here, um, I have the date of the project. Um, if I were to fly the site multiple times for job progress, um, I would have multiple dates and data sets up here, and I would be able to do a side-by-side -side comparison for them. Um, lastly, I'm just gonna go over your exports. So my results folder here, here are my outputs. So I have my orthomosaic, um, that is a geotiff. And then I have my point cloud, which is an LES file. This point cloud can go directly into Pixel Survey if you're wanting to vectorize, create contours, and then bring that into your CAD software. But that's pretty much it for Pixel 4 Cloud. Very simple, um, super easy to use. We do train on everything again. In case you weren't able to attend the Raleigh UAV workshop, um, we do demonstrations and trainings on everything we sell. Um, and we look forward to speaking with you soon.